New headset. Who dis? Um, hey guys, Super Turn here. Welcome back to Let's Play La Mulana 2. I'm gonna have fun balancing the audio this time around. Oh, uh, let's see. Last time, we defeated the mid bosses in the Halls of Malice and got the Ankh Stone, the actual Ankh, to show up for Echidna. We just don't have the Ankh Jewel. Which is what I must seek out now. Um. This is actually going to be an interesting. Um. I. No, I didn't change. Alright. This is going to be an interesting question for me of figuring out where this will be then. Um. I have a few ideas to check, but nothing is immediately springing to mind. I'm probably just going to be searching everywhere. First place to search, though, is... Let's get off that. Uh, first place to search is I'm going to check the shop down here because... I don't remember how many Ankh Jewels they sell, nor how many we've gotten from them. So, that'll be a good place to start. Alright. So it's not there. Roots of Big Drizzle, we've pretty much bled that dry. And with... Nothing's coming to mind. Immortal Battlefield. There's a lot in the Immortal Battlefield, but I think we let it dry. Ice Fire Tree Dumps. Did we get the actual Ankh for Cert? And if so, where did we get it? Because we've already fought and defeated him. I just don't remember where we would have gotten the actual Ankh jewel for him then. So let's go looking around a bit and see what we find. Isn't that a thing I can get also? Yes it is. I will have to look into that. And this isn't the worst place I could have ended up. It's an annoying place I could have ended up to be sure. But it's not the worst. Um, is there anything down below? I don't believe there's anything. Uh, you're a butt. And now you're a dead butt. I'm pretty sure there's nothing down below other than the chicken, which we've already killed. Um, we've already gotten that chest. We've already gotten the onk that. Um, already got the Ankh that Redditaskar had stolen, I think, I'm pretty sure. Let's go back and check. I want to say that was the one we used on Hell. I don't think there's anything else here other than entrance to that. Should be nothing above us. Shrine of the Frost Giants. Is there... We've already beat up Fenrir. Nothing else comes to mind there at the moment that we can use. Gate of the Dead should be done. Takamagahara Shrine. I don't think there's anything. Heaven's the Labyrinth. It's actually a good place to look, to be fair. Um, but where would it be in here, if anywhere? Um, hmm. Alright, I have to go through Typhon's room to actually get down to the bottom. Um, I feel like I've already hit up everything I could have done in here. Might be in the Halls of Malice. I've already gotten that out of purpose. Nothing more of these there. Sorry, fought Arachne. And that just 
take us back there. Let's check the holes in Alice. Because we've, we've gone through it, but we haven't really given it a proper search, to be fair. So... Orthus. Orthus is room... I know there's something up with that room. I want to investigate it more, but that's something we can address another time. Okay. Let me get through that properly. Who's in here again? Here it is. Uh, you tell us about Sharon. We already knew about that. We already fought this thing in here. Uh, where did the axe out? I feel like one of these walls is destroyable, but I don't know. Come on, get closer. Get closer. There we go. Nothing here. You don't have any particular thing more to say other than this. Where? I don't think the fairy would have anything. I'm pretty sure the fairy shouldn't have anything. I'll check though. Because she is just over here. Past that. Kill them, because of course I do. On the ancient guard, get Tarkin. Oh, right, that's where that's hidden for whatever reason. Oh, right, the angel shield. I would like it. Close your eyes, I'm gonna kick your ass. I'm gonna buy the Angel Shield at some point. It's a nice item to have. Ah, uh, Minotaurs. So that's where the Angel Shield was. I wasn't really remembering that accurately, so that's good to uh, have confirmed. Let's go back to where Orcus was. Because I feel like there is. I already saw that one. That's. Um, kill all these butts. Come on, let me kill you, you butt. Um, what else could it have been? This here is Orcus' room itself, and we're right next to where a kid was. Destroy Typhon. We already knew that, effectively. Yeah, we already were aware of the need to destroy Typhon. And that's where we get that. That was Typhon's, or Orthus's. Orthus's, uh, thing. I don't know why I'm investigating this room further. I've already gotten over it with a key theory. Probably have to come back with Typhon. Um, I can't destroy Typhon, though, until Echidna is destroyed. Yeah, because Typhon's where the dissonance is, and you need to defeat Echidna before you can actually do that. Sorry to spoil something, but we've already seen the writing on the walls. It's pretty apparent. What's up there, actually? Does that just take you through a hole? Yeah, that brings you back up into... Delphine's chamber. Right, I forgot about this room. Nothing of note all around. Actually, no. No, that's not a shop, that's just a room. I am just eating all of the damage today. Just all of it. Because of course I am. You've already told us about that. Echidna has what we know is a flute from another guy who I'm pretty sure told us that information. Hanzu, that's just stuff we already know about. Um, nothing 
down here, we fought Chimera, nothing in the Kidna's room itself. I'm gonna go back to Typhon. I feel like I'm missing something. There's nothing immediately obvious, at the very least. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, to be fair. Um... Guess we'll check the underworld more, but I can't think of what I'm missing. I feel like we've done everything that needs to be done in the underworld. With one exception that we can't do yet, which we're aware of because that is the kit. We found him, we just can't speak to him, and... We need what Echidna has, because she stole it from the Geigas. I would honestly, like, to be honest, I am... Uh, question first. Oh, uh, it's, it's Miracle Witch I need. So yeah, I'm gonna get a Key Fairy. Or a Heal Fairy. Um... There's nothing in particular here. Nothing of particular down here that I recall. Of course you guys would not get into this. That's relating to the hints that got us the, um, the flame sight. Oh my god, out of the lava. Careful. Nothing in this room. We've already got the bomb. That means, yes, I can actually. I was not aware that you could actually leap from down here. I thought you had to take the uh, thing, but apparently you can't just climb up. Um, already took care of Garm. Already. That doesn't apply yet. That doesn't apply yet. I'm missing something. Something relatively important. It could be a single chest. Alright, let's look at the items real quick. Ankh Jewel. What usable item don't I have yet? Because that's where the pepper goes. Um, I should fill that back up, actually. Oh, that might be the flute, maybe? The flute is either there or there. I'm missing an equip item, which would probably be the fur, which we already know exists. So... Oh, yeah, I'm blanking on it. There is so little left to do. Let's go back and check in on my kidneys real quick before I leave. Already done everything necessary in here. Um, this is going to be a real just wandering about video, isn't it? Oh. Wait, is that, that might be what I'm supposed to do. Because I remembered one of the items I don't have yet that I will need. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I can't do this because I need to refill the time. So let's take care of that real quick. And then stop with Molebrook on my next trip up there. Because I'm going to warp right back up here. Right back up here. Hey, Malbrook! I need your help. Oh, you're just telling us how to get the uh, fairies. Miracle Witch and Space Capster 2. To the Treasure Fairy to make some bank. La Mulana and La Mulana 2. Yeah, they, they have a fun combination she's telling you about. Uh, do you have anything else to tell us, Malbrook? 
Merkowitch and Kiri Master for the Ice Key. Or the Ice Fairy. Key Fairy. Words! My thoughts on Banjo right now. Uh, Yago Map Breeder and Yago Map Street upgrades to see hidden rooms. Knew about that already. Merkowitch and Bounce Shot to count on the Weapon Fairy. Alright, you don't seem to have anything. Why did I come this way? Well, I'm already up here, so... This is where I am now. Um... I'll just go down through here. Hmm. Well, I don't think that's my problem yet. Let's go check on them. Um, oh yeah, good, I already have this equipped. So let's just get across that before death. I like how the water still moves at the very least. Anything up here? Of note. Oh, the Kusagi research papers. Oh, right, let's actually take a quick look at those. Um, turn that off real quick so I can turn that back on. You know, let's read through all of this while I'm at it and faffing around. Eglana, oh, what's this one? Eglana, a copy of the Mother Discovered. I found the entrance to Eglana in the remnants of the La Mulana ruins. There didn't seem to be any particular traps or mechanisms of note. This may be thanks to the crystallization of the Mother's power we have in our possession, the secret treasure of life. The layout of Eglana ruins seemed to be similar to that of La Mulana, being split into several distinct areas. I've only just begun my investigation, but I'll record what I've discovered and noticed so far. I still have no idea as to when, nor how, the Eglana ruins were built, but it seems as though its existence has been known and was used as a kind of penal colony by the various races inhabiting the area throughout the generations. Those engaging in war among their own race were sent off to Eglana. It was basically a way to say, if you can't stop fighting, then do it somewhere with nobody around. To my utter surprise, there were still remnants of the various races that were thought to have died out completely. They may have been spared from the destruction at the hands of the Mother due to the fact that they remained inside Eglana, a copy of the Mother herself. It also seems as though they continue to fight amongst themselves or amongst each other to this day. It has become apparent that Eglana is structured in the shape of a huge upside-down tree. For this reason, the inhabitants of Eglana refer to this place as Idrisal, meaning World Tree. The center contains a large trunk-like area from there grow several branch-like areas. The remnants of the previous races are shot inside each of these branching areas. However, it seems that there is one race which has attempted to seize control of the Drizzle, known as the Locopolo. They are one of the races comprising the six children. They do not give the, impres the impression of being especially intellectually, intellectually advanced, to put it generously. Oh, sorry. Uh, I should pass that. Um, the impression of being exceptionally intellectually advanced, to put it generously, and seem to think of nothing other than taking over Drizzle. Surviving Tribes of the Six Children Five of the races born of the Six Children still remain in Eglana. I've heard this from one of the upper-class nobles of the, rem of the remnants of the Six Children. First off, the Locopala with the mission nations to take over Drizzle. Their efforts to seize control of Drizzle have been focused around an area known as the Immortal Battlefield. The races derived from the six children which were sent to Eglana for their inability to stop fighting and killing were the Aesir and the Vanir. The Aesir have sealed away the Vanir inside away in an area known as the Divine Fortress. The Vanir are an apocalyptic race who pray for world destruction. In preparation for their long-awaited Day of Destruction, the Vanir have accumulated some kind of powerful force known as the Cataclysm. It is said that long ago they had the ability to create huge weapons of terrible but destructive power capable of burning up the entire surface of the Earth. Never give up on your dreams, Vanir. It was the Alfir, whatever, I don't know how to pronounce things, who pronounced the fourth, or who brought forth the fourth, or the seventh. It was the Alf who brought forth the seventh children and who saw the mother's very existence as a threat, thus embarking on plans to seal her away. Now only a handful of them remain in an area known as Anlith, the fairy world. It seems that they were originally a race that had further split from the Lokapala, and who have since been fighting against their former brothers. But in order to seal the mother away, their leader, the Fairy Queen, escaped from Eglana to La Mulana, where she began working together with the Seventh Children on her plan to seal away the mother. 
the eighth children, me specifically, were able to figure out what was going, uh, what was about to happen through various clues throughout the ruins of La Moana, and was able to finally succeed in stealing the mother away. After all those years of work having finally led to success, you can imagine the utter frustration and dismay I experienced with finding this copy of the mother known as Eglon. I wonder if the Fairy Queen and her followers were able to predict that the sealing of the mother would cause Iglana to change. Oh, and there's a very there's also a tribe of beings who share the fairy name too. They're very small and have wings similar to those as insects. They could be considered the origin of what we know as what we know as fairies. The second children. The second children are said to have lived in the Shrine of the Frost Giants. However, it is written in surviving texts that these second children were wiped out through civil war in the ruins of La Mulana. It wasn't the giants who were in the Shrine of the Frost Giants, but a number of the local Paula. It appears that none of the second children, or er, yeah, yeah, it was it wasn't the giants who were in the Shrine of the Frost Giants, but a number of the local Paula. It appears that none of the second children remain in Iglana either. The civil war among the second children caused by the nine siblings who held power at the time. The texts detail nine siblings: Zebu, Badu, Migala, Lido, Puto, Abuto, G, Ribu, and Sakit. Detailed information on these siblings can be found accompanying some very nice stone statues found around the ruins of La Moana. Now, of course, stop. Possibly due to the fact that they were indeed giants, this race turned out to provide excellent and excellent workforce. And it was said that among all of the various races born from the mother over the centuries, it was they who came closest to achieving the final goal of returning the mother to space. They had apparently been successful in making contact with extraterrestrial beings and they made it as far as developing rocket ship technology, but even these advancements did not provide the power required to send the huge mother off into space. This is where opinions divided, continue trying to return the mother to space, or resign themselves to the fact that the mother would remain here on Earth. The nine siblings split into two opposing factions leading to war. According to the text remaining inside La Mulan, it was the youngest brother, Sakit, who ultimately wiped out both sides of the conflict. Nothing is known about Sakit's motives, or intentions. We do know about those now. The Fifth Children. The remaining survivors of the Fifth Children are enclosed within the Gate of the Dead, a race known as the Enad, apparently are sealed off deep down in one of the branching areas together with their enemy race, the Armana. The cause of their fighting is unknown. It is likely that the Enad are fighting against the Armana because the Armana are looking to seize power. Not yet having spoken with the Enad people, this is all I can say with confidence. Compared to the previous races, it seems as though the fifth children were created to be much more intelligent than their predecessors. One can assume that the mother realized that having too much power had caused previous races to set their sights on the power of the mother herself, and therefore created this smaller, more intelligent race. Consequently, inside Iguana, which is filled with in... Elicentic? I don't actually know that word. Mix of the various races, these people are referred to as dwarves. However, too much intelligence can also... can also become a form of great power. Their high intelligence caused them to fear their own mortality, regardless of the fact they had much longer natural lifespan than we modern humans. So the fifth children continued their research into technologies and methods for escaping death, as well as for creating life itself. The races remaining in La Moana constructed a massive pyramid and planned to utilize it in an attempt to absorb the mother's power. Possibly seeing these behaviors as a form of blasphemy or sacrilege against herself, the mother used her power to throw the language of the fifth children into confusion. Now unable to communicate properly amongst themselves, let alone with other races, the fifth children started fighting with each other and eventually wiped themselves out through war. However, the life-bearing machine created by the fifth children, the Tree of Life, was used by the mother as a tool. She was now able to, now able to create life and subsequently a new workforce without using any of her own power. Born from this tree of life was a race known as the Six Children, who were aesthetically similar to modern man. Having been created from clay, their lifespans are immensely longer than ours. It was these Six Children, for whom the influence of the mother was considerably weakened, who began consider sealing the mother away. The First Children. Within, the, or within Takamagahara Shrine reside the remaining survivors of the First Children. To think that one day I would actually come into contact with a living snake person. As an archaeologist, it's basically like winning the lottery. It seems that the race known as the Katoa Matsu within, uh, remain within Iglana. Apparently, the, Koto, the, the Katoa Matsu are also sealed off deep within one of the branching areas as well. From what I can gather, someone seems to be controlling some of the Katoa Matsu, someone known as the Anunnaki. 
There are references to the Anunnaki found in, or in the records found in the La Moana ruins. Simply put, they are an alien race known as the Sky People. If this is indeed the case, then this would conflict with the story about the second children being the first to make contact with extraterrestrial beings. Had the first children al uh, really already made contact with aliens? In ancient culture and texts all around the world, there are stories found in various ruins and various writings mentioning beings who have uh, thought to have been alien races coming to Earth and presenting mankind with the gift of civilization. Manipulating the Katoa Matsu and coming down to Earth, what could their intentions be? I feel as though my investigations of Eglana will reveal mind-boggling secrets by each of the respective races remaining there. The plot is thickened further. The third race are a race of winged beings found in the Heaven's Labyrinth. The Gygus race had been sealed away by the race known as the Olympians. However, the Olympians are considered to be fair, uh, be a fair and just race. It seems strange that I detect no sense of ambition nor drive from them. The third children had wings and were apparently able to fly. Consequently, their physical composition varied greatly from that of modern man. The backs of their heads were elongated and they had very thin bodies. It is possible that they had extremely lightweight bones as well, much like birds. According to the records I found during my investigations of the La Moana ruins, they apparently adopted civilization and culture of the first children. A pair of twins, Idigana and Branan, were among the few survivors of the first children. This means that the civilization of the first children was acquired from these two twins. They then embarked on the task of creating a copy of the mother. Back in the La Mulana ruins, I defeated monsters called Nua and Tiamat. They were said to have been born from an imitation of the mother's power. However, they were both gigantic snake women. I suppose accurately recreating the mother's power must have been impossible for them. It's somewhat understandable that this sort of behavior would cause the mother to wipe them out. According to the Olympians, it was the Gygus who were attempting to create this copy of the Mother. But I guess we'll see what kind of further information turns up. We've already learned that Typhon and the Olympians were behind this. Plans of the Alf Tribe. The ultimate goal of the Alf Tribe plan to seal away the Mother was a complete independence of humanity from the Mother. Having been born Neglana, they realized the danger of her power. Having decided to seal off the... Um, Eglana, basically a copy of the mother, they must have figured out that they would have to seal off La Mulana as well, La Mulana being the mother herself. Understanding that they themselves would be unable to stand up to the mother on their own, they passed their mission on to the next generation, the Seventh Children. They made the four philosophers, the leaders of the Seventh Children, promise to ensure the fairy's survival in exchange for her information from Eglana. Since some of the mother's influence remained even in the Seventh Children, they were unable to seal her off directly Leading them, prefer, leading them to perform further work on Yggdrasil and subsequently create the eighth children, us. We were born as a short-lived, comparatively weakened race with no knowledge of the mother and no way for her influence to affect us. Lamuan itself acted as a sort of training ground, and one with the power to overcome the dangers of these ruins, that is to say, I myself, have finally succeeded in sealing the mother away. Immediately after sealing off the mother, they apparently sought to seal off Eglon as well, since it lost the mother's power. However, something changed the game. The ninth child, a physical copy of the mother's very mind, was created just before the mother's death. Until that point, Eglon was simply a shell, a mindless copy of the mother's physical body. But now, in the form of the ninth child, that body gained a mind and was subsequently awakened. Neither the elf nor the seventh children were able to stand up against the mother's power. Once again, we, the eighth children free from the mother's influence, became the main players. Big Lore dropped this episode, which is going to be all we accomplished this episode. Lingering Mystery of Eglana. When investigating Eglana, the copy of the mother, it was incredibly fortunate that there were still remain survivors from each previous race. I was able to investigate matters not made clear by the remaining texts alone. However, I also came upon an even bigger mystery. It was likely thanks to the fruits of the effort of the six children, the Alf, that the relatively young seventh children were able to thoroughly investigate the ruins of La Moana and put together a means to seal off the mother. While the mother's influence over them was comparatively weaker than the previous races, they were not completely free of her power, yet they were able to continue the research carefully without being noticed by her. Even so, it was quite strange that the technology they developed to seal off Iglana was possible even was possibly even more advanced than that used in La Mulan. 
I believe that the Alf may have been planning to take advantage of a certain mechanism to seal off Iglana. If this is indeed the case, then who implemented said mechanism? The Sky People, of which there are numerous legends? Where are they? Are they even still alive? It doesn't seem... It seems we don't have much time left. There are those among the Seventh Children who await at the ceiling with a sense of dread you deserve for the end of the world. A sort of estranged parent syndrome in response to the impending loss of this absolute existence that has been ingrained to their very genes. Domination from space. It would seem that the Anunnaki were indeed extraterrestrial beings. Apparently they came to Earth from a place known as Nibiru. Whether it was for the purposes of finding a new place to live, or rather to seek out resources, is unknown. What is known is they plan to take control of the Earth. Either way, they became aware of the existence of both La Moana and Eguana. It seems to me that they have been involved in Earth's affairs since the time of the first, ch first children, considering the decline of the first children and the fragmentation of the second children, the involvement of the Anunnaki in both of these and all subsequent occurrences become clear, or at least, or so I feel, at least. I believe it was they who implemented this huge device inside the ruins for the purpose of sealing off both sites. However, said device remains within the ruins, unused, possibly because the Anunnaki went extinct before they could use it. But the Elf have, must have conceived a way to make use of the device that is constructed unlike anything else in these ruins, a corridor of blood. Order of Blood will be the key to us doing what we need to do. And since we're in a massive war drop, Skull. Let's read the last few we haven't read. Winged puny dumbasses, shameless imitators of the Mother. Our land is dead, our body decays. Your pathetic copy of the Mother, we're slicing that in two. Fulfill our will. For real, you guys, fulfill our will. That land is ours. I love how Punk and dumbass this feels with these guys. Puny little dumbasses with your stupid wisdom. Ye jerk-offs playing with clay dolls. Fulfill our will. Our body has decayed. We shall leave only our noble will. What hath become of the six-sided seal? Seal it. Seal it with the six-sided seal. Then the original child's body in the mother's mind should disappear. Fulfill our will. Fulfill our damn will. Oh, ye foolish, dumbass little clay dolls. Awaken that sleepy, nasty-ass mother. Then make use of our seal, the seal of blood. The seal of blood the Master Skull mentions. Offer the twelve skulls to their pedestal. Offer them to our decaying carcasses. To our stupid, dumbass carcass. I love the Adaduki. They are... They are great. So great. But we know what to do. This is a long episode. I'm just going to end it off there before it gets too much longer. Next time, we're going to go off to the Dark Star, Star Lord's Mausoleum. And we're just going to offer these skulls while I continue to figure out where the crap this onk thing is. I don't think it's up there, but we'll find out. Anyway, I'll see you guys all next time. Later.